I think there's a lot of bad football from what I watch. You know? <laughs> I watch a lot of bad football, a lot of, yeah, poor quality of football, that's what I see. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Tom Brady, one of us, <laughs> one of us. Tom Brady watches a lot of bad football. So did Jay and I last night. So did America. It is Woo. noon on Friday on Peacock, but it is 5 o'clock somewhere as we join uh, you guys at the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Jay Croucher, Matthew Berry here, and Tom Brady speaking for a country when he says, I watch a lot of bad football. Dude, that was brutal last night. It was a tough one. That's about as bad as it gets. Uh, I can't remember. I remember there was a 6-6 Seattle-Arizona game in primetime as well, which Russell Wilson is also obviously a part of. Usually Russell Wilson has amazing primetime games. That's his whole thing. He's primetime Russell Wilson. And, uh, I mean, you know who he looked like to me last night? Kirk Cousins. He looked like <laughs> Russell Westbrook on the Lakers. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, he just looked like a broken player out there. And look, Shots fired. I think he, he should get better, but that was, that was as bad as it gets. Yeah, I mean, a lot of tweets out there. Uh, I tweeted out, this is the greatest, worst game I've yeah. ever seen. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, I saw other tweets out there as well, um, like uh, Scott Hansen. <laughs> Let's cut to another game. Yes. Pretty good. Host the red zone, obviously no other game there. Wade Phillips at Son of Bun, the great Wade Phillips, legendary coach. I think both teams should consider punting on first down. They'd have probably screwed that one up. Uh, that was Wade. Uh, Scott Simpson uh, at, Numble, at Nimble with Numbers. I just decided that whoever finishes last in my home league has to rewatch this game as our league punishment. Um, I feel like that's cruel and unusual. Yeah. Like, I mean, pun league punishments need to be, you know, need to be cruel, but like also fun. Mm. Like, that's just not fun for everyone. Like, I would enjoy watching you be forced to get a tattoo or, you know, or, or dress up in an embarrassing outfit, having to pour, perform mime on a corner. I would not enjoy watching you watch that game. No, that's it's not fun. It's so brutal. That's, that's torturous. Right. Yeah, you I have to take somebody out on a date, you know, yeah. like a, a doll or a, you know, a stuffed animal on a date. Like, there's lots of, you know, having to take the SAT. I would rather retake the SAT than rewatch that game. That was a tough one. You remember when Joe Judge called the QB sneak on like third and eight? Like yeah. that would have been a play that would have been highly efficient last night. Like that's what they needed. That uh, was absolutely a brutal game. Uh, I don't think anyone was affected worse than our own Mike Florio from <laughs> Pro Football Talk who, uh, who tweeted this. I usually smoke a cigar during the second half. I may go score some meth at halftime for this one getting his breaking bad on no uh no reports as of yet whether he was successful or not in yeah. scoring meth i guess we'll find out mike. uh on uh on sunday mike heisenberg warrior yeah, exactly yeah. a little bit you don't want to ruin breaking bad for everyone out there how that is no 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 breaking bad is safe that's a safe space for you breaking bad non-watchers as of yet it is one now, of the all-time great shows. at least you won some people some money last night. Thank you very much. Yeah, the betting expert, Jay Croucher, did not, but Matthew Berry won, hitting both of your props. Melvin Gordon under 57 and a half, which should have won a lot easier. You had to much sweat that easier. out. I know. That was like, I, it was like, I was looking great. Like, he had 12 rushing yards in the first half. I was looking great. And then it goes to overtime, and then he's getting some chunk plays. I'm like, oh. What's interesting about this, so we, when we, when I put it, gave it out on air, I gave it out at 57 and a half, but it kept ticking up. Yeah. It got as high as 63 and a half yeah, in a lot of places believed. as well. Uh, I think it ended at 60 and a half on Ben MGM, but um, you know, so it kept ticking up the, the under wins there. And of course, Matt Ryan to throw an interception. It was just at minus 120. That was an easy one. It yeah. was an easy one, but some t just because you hit the layup doesn't mean it doesn't count in the box <laughs> score. It does. He actually throws two just to make sure, hey, in case you guys had second half interception, <laughs> I'm going to hit that for you as well. You went over one and a half rushing yards, Jay. You should have won this bet. I should have won the bet. He took off on his last play of the game. I had to wait. I had to sit through the entire game to get to him taking off in OT. And I swear to God, he got a second yard on that play. And they gave him a bad spot. Bad spot. He gets one yard. And there were like three or four plays where he should, where the smart football play would have been to run for three or four yards where he had a, had a path. And instead, he threw it away or just said, you know what? I would, what I would rather do is I will just sit back here for five more seconds, get sacked. Yeah, exactly. Now, you hit two of your bets, but the best bet that hit last night for mine was our own Vaughn Dalzell uh, on the NFL on NBC YouTube channel, who gave out no touchdowns scored in the game at plus 7,000. We've got some sound of Vaughn giving that out. 
for my longest shot of them all. In no way do I actually think this is probably going to win. But will am I, I going to sprinkle no touchdown score in a Colts Broncos game when these two teams combine for about thirty two points per game? Uh, yeah, I'm going to sprinkle this. This actually opened up at plus ten thousand uh, and has gone down to plus seven thousand. So there are actually hmm. people betting this in the world. Um, mind you, I'm not throwing more than five dollars on this bet. Um, I think that if we're going to see a Thursday night football game that doesn't have any touchdown scored, uh, it certainly looks like a Broncos Colts team with no Javante Williams or Jonathan Taylor. Vaughn Dalzell and Tom Brady, both very prophetic. I think I'm going to start giving out all my picks all in right, the dark. So I, I'm, let me do some math here. So if he threw five bucks, is anyone going to throw more than five bucks? But still, five five bucks at plus seven thousand. Yeah, well, let me uh, let me do some <laughs> math here. What, what is that? If the calculus is three hundred fifty dollars. Three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Turn five bucks into three hundred fifty dollars. Pretty good. There you go. Steel, that's, that's not bad. That's, that's not, not a bad. That's not a bad return. Not. Yeah. Like, the right, only man. You know, in... Like imagine giving five bucks to a Starbucks and then they give you three hundred fifty bucks back. <laughs> it's not bad. That's not bad at all. I, I would take that all day and, and twice on Vaughn Sunday. Vaughn Dalzell, the one man in America who enjoyed Colts Broncos, which is I think the new definition of bad football almost a caricature of a bad game but let's go into the fantasy takeaways now my man russell westbrook russell wilson uh that's right can he that's right can he no longer be started in fantasy lineups after whatever the hell happened last night no i don't think so yeah. i mean you know i mean like all jokes aside look I, i've met russell wilson a couple of times in my life could not be a lovelier person like the the you know the the wholesome sort of guy you see like I don't know what he's like in real real life but I will just tell you that I've met him in like away from cameras and he was what you'd expect him to be which is genuine and interested and nice and and normal and like you know like a good dude and so uh, I understand there's a lot of people that want to bag on sort of the, the the for lack of a better way to describe it the cornball nature of you know of, of let's ride and and all of that and Mr. Unlimited but I don't root for good guys. There's enough bad guys in the NFL. I don't root for bad guys. It's for good guys to fail. But, you know, I do think it's fair. And I, I so I don't want to make fun of that. I will say that it is fair to criticize the performance because it hasn't been there. It hasn't been there from an NFL perspective. You just watch the games from an eye test. You're like, yep. that ain't the same guy. No. It's bad. And, you know, like a lot of people are going to focus on him missing Kamler on the last play. Right? I mean, but what you, is you, that? I mean, what like, is you're just that? like, right, this is just that sloppy football. It's bad as we're watching the play um, on the show on Peacock where he just threw the bad interception. Just it, it felt like he was trying to throw it away and he just, you know, just an easy sort of uh, can of corn there for the outfielder as well. And then throwing the pick into the end zone as well. Two bad picks. He came into week five, surprisingly enough, as the fifth best, uh, sorry, the 12th best quarterback in fantasy. A lot of that sort of, you know, ra risen up by his week four performance, the, the crazy game um, as well, where he, he had a huge game. He was on my love list last week. That paid off for me. He wound, wound up as QB3, 27 and a half fantasy points in week four. But QB14, QB24, QB28. And um, that was his first three weeks. And he was in week three, he was QB28. He scored 9.1 fantasy points. Last night, he scored 9.2. Yeah. So we have a lot of football still to play, but he's going to be somewhere in the 25 to 32 range yep. for quarterbacks. So four out of the five games that Russell Wilson has played, he has been quarterback 14 or worse. Three out of the five games he's played, he's been quarterback 24 or worse. I, I, I don't, I mean, like, and by the way, here's their upcoming schedule. Yeah. At the Chargers, that's not a good matchup. You don't love that. Home to the Jets, okay, fine. That's not a pushover matchup, but that's no. like you don't you're, you're not scared about that, especially because it's at home. But at Jacksonville, yeah, it's tough. They got a good defense. Yeah, there. the Swagwars. Yeah, I, I've the been Swagwars. on the Jaguars all year. <laughs> yeah, you know this. Yeah, I don't know when are you finally coming on board, <laughs> yeah. Jay? Maybe this so, week. Maybe, maybe this week. I finally, finally buy in off exactly. the Texans. Exactly. I've been begging <laughs> yeah. you to get on board with the Jaguars. It's ah, I'm alone <laughs> and talking to people. This is a good team, but uh, you know. So and then he's at Tennessee in Week Four. I, if you went to the season with Russell Wilson as your only quarterback. You need another option. Yeah, you right? need a and Marcus so Mariota. You need someone else, anyone else. I just think the aura around Russell Wilson is gone as well. Like, think about if you're a Ravens fan or a Ravens money line better against the Bills, as yeah. soon as Lamar threw that pick, you knew that Josh Allen was driving down the field and winning that game. Russell Wilson used to inspire that same stuff just right. two years ago, and now right. that guy is just completely gone at the moment. Right. There, there are some guys in the NFL – Brady's one of them. Mahomes is one of them. Josh Allen is one of them. There are I, Jalen Hurts is getting there, uh, but you know the, Allen, Brady, Mahomes, Rogers. 
Oh, wait, you just gave me you you're down whatever you need and you just gave the the ball back to Aaron Rodgers on his own 20 with 45 seconds left. Yep. Tom Brady, Josh Allen, you're like uh this Sorry, this is this this might Stop. yeah, exactly. But you know, and like you, you used to feel that way about Russell Wilson sure. and you certainly don't. I agree with you. There is no mystique there anymore. They are last in the NFL in touchdown conversion in the red zone. They uh, they've had fewer than 10 yards per attempt in four out of the five games. Um I get that it was a short week and the Colts have a good defense, but that was bad yep. last night. And what's happening is, is that whether it's Hackett or Russell Wilson or a combination thereof, I, I said this on the radio. I did a radio interview on the way in. I bet you, I wish I could put lines on this, but someone call a bet MGM and see if they'll get me a line for this. Okay. Uh, but I bet any, I would love to make this bet that somewhere in the next three weeks, it leaks out. And I'm using air quotes for those that are listening. It leaks out. Um, that uh, Russ has been playing with a bad shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Or that, you know, or like he's been playing through a, you know, tough ankle yep. or the wrist is still bothering. So he's so tough. He's a warrior. He didn't want to yep. complain about it, yep. but he's clearly less than 100%. Like the, something's going to leak out to try to protect how poorly he has played. Yep. I'll give you a lot. That's minus 2,000. That's happening. It's I, definitely I, I, happening. Look. I, I would still take that. I would <laughs> yeah. still take the bet. I yeah. think the concern as well is that. This is on, it's on him. Like his offensive line has been good. Like just watch the last play of the game. That's the perfect kind of encapsulation. Perfect blocking. They have the second best pass right. blocking blo grade by PFF, the Broncos. Judy hasn't been a great. Sutton's been fine. But this is on Russ. And so one of his supporting cast members who was like fine, uh, Melvin Gordon, uh, who had 15 rushing attempts for 54 yards, gets the three receptions for 49 receiving yards. I mean, is Melvin Gordon, particularly with how bad Russ has been and potentially the Broncos leaning on the run game more, could he be a top 20 running back going forward? He's a sell high is what he is. Okay. Melvin Gordon's a sell high. If you watch that game closely, and sadly, I'm contractually required to do so because <laughs> that's my job. Literally, I'm on the couch with my wife and my oldest son and his girlfriend, and we're all watching. And, you know, my wife is like, can we, t this is brutal. And I'm like, I know, but I'm on national TV tomorrow talking about this piece of blank and I said a bad word um, uh, so no I I watched that game closely and Melvin Gordon was somewhat effective in the passing game yep. he was not effective in the running game and it's only because again it, it Colts were traveling on a short week playing at mile high I know that's not the name of the field but you know like the elevation Empower. they were they were tired towards the end and so Melvin Gordon started to get some chunk plays but I got news for you right um, so he got 13.3 fantasy points and he got a couple of goal line opportunities, didn't convert because, you know, they're the Broncos. <laughs> uh, but um, he played with, he played 59% of the team's offensive snaps and 37% and 37% of the snaps in the second half. Felt like as it was getting close and they needed, it, like, they were yeah. like, ah, <laughs> Melvin Gordon, who's, who didn't fumble last night and it was the first game all year that he didn't. Latavius Murray is coming. And so I believe. At, be at best, Melvin Gordon is the head of a three-headed running back by committee on a bad offense. And so I think you can take this 13.3 fantasy performance from last night and potentially trade him next week. Be like, look, you know, like he's going to get all the work. Russell's bad. Like they're going to lean more on the run game. No, no Javante Williams. Like I think you can sell Melvin Gordon with sort of that narrative, but like, I want out. I want out of this offense. Like, I, I still like Cortland Sutton, but I want out of the business of the Denver Broncos offense for the foreseeable future. And I do think Latavius Murray is going to have a real role here. I don't – nothing Melvin Gordon did last night made me go play like, yeah. Yep. Like, he had a couple of nice plays in the passing game. Yep. But, again, I think they'll use some Mike Boone there too, and I don't know that you can count on that. And I – I think as well, there's a there's I think a weird his value is, like, I think he'll be usable, but I think Melvin Gordon's value is actually at its highest right now. Yeah, to play into that, there was something last night that was interesting where the Colts, they kind of gave Melvin Gordon some extra yards because they weren't trying to tackle him. They were just trying to force a fumble. Mm -hmm. That's what they were doing. And if they're doing that, if teams are kind of overcompensating to try and force fumbles and there's more likelihood, he's one fumble away from just being in the doghouse and being in real trouble, particularly with Latavius Murray coming in all right Jerry Judy has he reached the point of unplayable uh, like his quarterback Russell Wilson three for 53 last night no touchdowns did have eight targets yeah I mean great I mean like and by targets you mean it was thrown on the general side of the field that he was on yes uh, yeah I mean I to me I'm not dropping Jerry Judy but I can't start him with any confidence like I'm not starting him next week at the Chargers no 
you know, and let's see what happens. I could see starting him at home with the Jets. Like, I think he's going to be a spot starter, but he's had 31 career games. He's had fewer than 16 fantasy points in 28 of them. So the upside really isn't there. He's had fewer than – he's had single-digit fantasy points in three out of five games so far this year, right? I mean, like, he really needs to be a volume guy because he's not a touchdown guy. I mean, he's had 31 career games. He's got five touchdowns. Five touchdowns in 31 career yep. games. And, and so the argument is, oh, well, he's had bad quarterback play. I got news for you. He's still got bad quarterback play. So, yeah, I mean, I, the only person that I am starting with confidence on the Broncos offense is Cortland Sutton. Let's quickly move to the Colts now and Matt Ryan. I, no, one's, no one's starting Matt Ryan. No. The question is, is he decent enough? confident enough to keep fantasy relevant pass catchers afloat uh michael Pittman, i thought that's a pretty good game. five for 59 look he was he was covered by Patrick certain man, right you know now. like yep. really tough um he 99 of the offensive snaps short week I'm not worried about michael Pittman. alec pierce i think could be a thing though i think so too yeah it was he was everywhere last night yeah, I mean, look, this is this is now back-to-back -back weeks with over 80 receiving yards. He's had more than 60 in three straight games. He's averaging 11 yards a target in his last three. Feels like the Colts have finally figured out, okay, hey, there's another viable pass catcher, especially with teams giving so much attention to Michael Pittman. Alec Pierce is going to be a thing. He's available in 92% of Yahoo League's J. And – I thought just from an NFL standpoint, he made some contestant catches. He ran good routes. This is a guy that a lot of people loved as a sleeper coming out of Cincinnati. Um, uh, he's um, uh, So, I mean, I think a lot of people felt like in the draft that Chris Ballard got a steal with Alec Pierce. And so I'm buying in. I mean, you know, we like the talent. You know, he was somebody we already liked in Dynasty. But I do think he's a viable guy going forward. Yeah, I think it's a good sign as well for his talent level and production that the Broncos were so concerned about him that they actually put Sertan on him at the end off of Michael Pittman, who's a top 15 receiver in the NFL. Easy. I do think it's incredible that Matt Ryan had two interceptions, got sacked six times, including a strip sack, and was clearly the better quarterback in the game I for mean, mine. He made some yeah. plays. He stood up in the pocket, took some hits. But uh, let's jump into some Roto World headlines, yeah. starting with a favorite character on the Fantasy Football Happy Hour, Kyle Pitts, who with his hamstring has been ruled out Sunday against Tampa Bay. America's nightmare continues. Well, will they be able to tell? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kyle Pitts won't play in this game just like he has it in the first four games. I mean, the jokes write themselves. I mean, come on, right? You know, I mean, it's like, how will you tell? Right? You know, you'll open up the box score on Monday. Oh, oh so no, Kyle Pitts. Oh. Okay, it's another Sunday. Yes, yes. It's just another NFL Sunday. On to breakfast. Here's the positives. Here's the positives are. It's pretty much like every week of the NFL season, but the positives are is that we know on Friday not to play Kyle Pitts as opposed to on Monday. You know, the previous four weeks, we knew on Monday that we shouldn't have played Kyle Pitts the week before, the, on Sunday. But now, at least on Friday, we know that Kyle Pitts is out. Uh, no one, no one is here is cheering on injury. Of course, it's a hamstring injury. We hope Kyle Pitts gets better. This is not on Kyle Pitts. This is on Marcus Mariota. This is on Arthur Smith. This is on the entire Falcon staff. We love Kyle Pitts here. Free Kyle Pitts and get better Kyle Pitts. What this means, though, Jay Croucher, is that you're starting to look for a tight end. I'll give you a couple of guys. The highest rated tight end that I have that's available in you know more than 50% of Yahoo leagues is Tyler Conklin, who's available in 59%. Eight or more targets in three of the four games through the four weeks. He's a top eight fantasy tight end. And I believe, you know, as we've talked about with Miami, really good corner play. So what do you do? You go towards the middle of the field. I think Tyler Conklin would be sort of my number one choice. My next choice is... Logan Thomas? Well, of course it's Logan, Logan Thomas. Thomas. Of course Come it's on. Logan Thomas. Look, he's had five or more targets in three out of four games so far this year. Logan Thomas is available in basically 80% of, uh, of Yahoo leagues. And, look, I mean, the, the Titans' off defense doesn't scare you. Through the first four weeks of the season, they're 28th against the pass. We know that Tennessee's going to be able to move the ball against Washington because the commander's uh, defense is um, – is uh, 24th against the pass. Yes. They're brutal too. So uh, they were going to have to throw in this game. Uh, so yeah, give me some Lo give me some Logan Thomas uh, as well. Hayden Hurst, I think, is a viable option. Hayden Hurst has five receptions in two or four games here. We expect a lot of fireworks on that Sunday night game right here on NBC and Peacock. Of course, I'm a company man. No team has given up more passing yards this year than the Baltimore Ravens. So I think Hayden Hurst is a guy. And then Irv Smith. Irv Smith of the Minnesota Another Vikings. Favorite. My little now, listen. It's not a primetime game for Kirk Cousins. <laughs> we should be okay. They're at home against the Bears. The Bears have, uh, you know, the Bears have played better pass defense because it's just so easy to run on them. 
But Irv Smith is 54% available, and I think that the narrative on him is somewhat different if he'd caught that one, that you know, that yeah, that the 50-yard bomb, against, 50 Philly. Yard bomb yeah, against Philly yeah. as well. Finally, last one I'll mention here, Will Disley has 12 or more fantasy points in three or four games this season. He scored in all three. He's a little bit touchdown dependent, but name a tight end that isn't. Tough matchup on the road at New Orleans, but we're all sort of buying into Geno. Like, yeah. honestly, at this point of the season, who would you rather have, Geno Smith or Russell Wilson? You'd rather have Geno Smith right now. I mean, I think you'd rather have Teddy Bridgewater as well. Based on, like, obviously, you'd rather have Wilson, I guess, going forward in terms of projecting him. But for next week, until he figures himself out. I'm going to say something crazy. Oh, no. Drew Locke. I, I'd rather Drew... have Carson Wentz. Yeah, no, that's not crazy at all. I'd rather yeah. have Carson. I no, know we're sure. one and three. Wentz is better. I'd rather have Carson Wentz. He's a better I'd rather be right one now. and three with Carson Wentz than two and two with, or I guess two and three now with Russell Wilson. Mm, Let's move right. on to. Um, I'm on Ross St. Brown. Yeah. Who, uh, returned to practice with his ankle injury. Yeah. Now Dan Campbell said earlier in the week that basically Friday's practice would determine who would play against the Patriots this week. He hasn't officially been ruled in the game, but certainly a very positive sign for Amon Ra St. Brown, who I think if he's active against the Patriots, I think you're starting him, especially given the fact that the bye is next week. I can't imagine the Lions, because he's such an important part of their offense. I don't think the Lions are throwing him out there to decoy and risk further injury to Amon Ra St. Brown. So I think if he's active, I think you can safely start him. Of course, we'll talk more about this Sunday morning fantasy football pregame, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, all the way until kickoff right here on Peacock. I'm a company man. The Josh Reynolds show might be over yeah. if Amon Ross St. Brown does suit up. But we are getting Hawkinson and DJ Shark also uh, also practice as well. No DeAndre Swift. It's going to be another Jamal Williams week yep. right. at the running back spot. Let's uh, close out with Hunter Renfro, who sure, shed sure. the non-contact jersey coming back from a concussion. Uh, would you be starting him if he is cleared to play, as looks like he's going to be? I'm at wide receiver 37. Some, I mean, you know, in a deeper league, I suppose. I need to see it. You know, I mean, again, like the Raiders offense has been a little bit inconsistent so far. We expect a ton of points to be scored against Kansas City on Monday night. Uh, but, again, you've, you've, you've got Waller. It's been hard to get him going. Obviously, you expect Devontae Adams. Matt Collins has become a thing. Yeah. So, it's just like how many – how many balls are there to spread around? Like, again, I like Renfro as a player. We haven't really seen fantasy production from him this year. He's been banged up. Wide receiver 37. Sort of, if you have, you know, if you have multiple, if you have multiple wide receivers that are in my top 36, you would start them. <laughs> but if, if not, all depends on who yeah. So, I'm not must starting him. He's a wide receiver four without Yeah, he had 10 targets in his last game against Arizona. So, that is something to hold on to. Sure. He did have that. All right, we're going yeah. to break. When we come back, it is Flex Friday, Ooh. Matthew. And we'll go into who we might start and sit in the flex positions. Flex Friday! Like I said, he played with swagger. When he comes in the huddle, he demands, like, you know, huddle up, uh, come in, listen. He basically, it's just uh, everybody respects him. Basically, uh, he's a great player. You know, he's, he's, he's young. He's going to continue to learn and develop. Uh, and, uh, it's our job, like I said, to make him look good and help him stay comfortable while he's out there. All right, a new dawn. In Pittsburgh, the Kenny Pickett era begins. Nice, easy matchup first time around for Kenny Pickett against the Buffalo Bills, who are 14-point favorites against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Is that a lot? Because that feels like a lot. Feels like a lot. Yeah. I think the Steelers have never been 14-point underdogs uh, in, in like 50 years wow. or so, basically okay. as long as we've been tracking lines. So good luck to you, Kenny Pickett, going against the Bills' defense. Now, there's a lot of interesting fantasy guys in this match, and one guy who is... Uh, going to kick off Flex Friday, bizarrely, because he was a top 10 pick pretty much across the board, is Najee Harris. Is yeah. he no longer a must-start fantasy player, particularly when you're 14-point underdogs to the Bills? I, I, I think you're going to be hard-pressed. Now, maybe, you know, maybe like whatever, you, you got James Robinson late, you, you picked up Jeff Wilson off the waiver wire. Sure. So, like, there are scenarios where I could see you would have two – like, both of those guys I have ranked higher than Najee Harris this week. So, there are scenarios in which I could see – you having two running backs better than Najee Harris, but not. Nah, I think more more likely you're starting him if you have him. You're just lowering expectations for him. I have it running back 20 this week, so I still have him as a, a low end starter against the Bills. You know what you're basically hoping for is volume. So you see it there on your screen. 
you know, he's had at least 18 touches in three out of four games this year. He had 12 touches in week one against the Bengals, but he did score the touchdown. He's got a touchdown in two out of four games this year. We expect the offense to be better under Kenny Pickett. And they use they haven't used him much in the passing game, but it's not like he's a total liability there. Obviously, he he, he that was a big part of his fantasy success last year. So Najee Harris, make no mistake. It's a tough match because the Bills defense that allow the second fewest yards per carry and the fourth fewest rush yards. But I think just volume yep. for uh, for Najee Harris, is he getting the insane volume he got last year? No, but is he getting enough that you likely don't have a better option? Yes, I'm just he's more of a lower end RB2 and you're hoping that he falls into the end zone versus the, you know, top 8 or 9 guy that you drafted him to be. Yep, 14 and a half carries per game plus the passing game work that he's generally going to get. And right, again, let's see what this offense looks like under under Pickett. We think it'll be better. Maybe Pickett dumps it off a little bit more than uh, Mitch Trubisky. We think they're going to be in scoring position more than they were under Trubisky. Whatever it is, it's going to be different, and that's all you want. If you're a Najee Harrisonian, you just want something different. A Uh, thousand percent. Now, the guy who is potentially going to ride the most of that difference is George Pickens, who has been the player of the week in terms of waiver wire pickups if he was on waivers. Uh, How highly are you rating George Pickens? Yeah, I like him. Certainly you wish he was a better matchup than the Buffalo Bills, who have the number one pass defense through four weeks. But the positives here are, again, small sample size, but it's all we've got to go off of. You know, a 30% target share once Kenny Pickett came in last week. I mean, he was looking for George Pickett. He got four targets. He caught all of them, 71 yards. Like, they're targeting him down the field. We saw the amazing catch on Thursday night against the Browns. We know the athletic ability is there for George Pickens. We know the Steelers have a long history of developing wide receivers into really good players, both NFL and fantasy-wise. I think George Pickens is the next guy in that line. They're taking deep shots with him. He's got the third highest average depth of target so far this season. Pickett, we think, is an upgrade over Trubisky. I have George Pickens as wide receiver 41, so not a must start, yeah. but I do think he is a, a viable flex and you know, in your league where you play three wide receivers and you generally like wide receiver versus uh, uh, running back in a flex, especially if it's PPR. Yeah, I, I, am, I am more pro than anti-George Pickens this week. I'm very pro on him season long for the rest of the season, but this week I'm more pro than anti, even though the tough matchup with the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. A little bit of buzz that Pickens is the guy in Pittsburgh going forward. You want? No, you still want no, Deontay like Johnson. Percent. He's still the number one guy. It's one half of a sample size of Pickens being the guy. Like Deontay Johnson has been the number one receiver across multiple mm-hmm. quarterbacks in Pittsburgh. He's one of the 15 most talented receivers in the game. He's still the guy that you want, but Pickens, potentially a guy in your flex spot. Devin Singletary, uh, is he someone that you're starting against the Steelers' defense that, even without TJ Watt, has been a top 10 unit? We talked about Devin Singletary last week, who was on the love list. He paid off as well. I, I'm in on Devin Singletary. What's, ex- what's exciting here is that he is playing a ton. Where, where it started out like he was kind of in a committee, but as the as the Bills got into some tougher matchups, you know, the loss to the Dolphins, the the the, the back and forth game with the Ravens last week that they won, they're using uh, Devin Singletary quite a bit. You look at the numbers; he's ninth among running backs in snap share. He's got the second most receiving yards among running backs. Right? He's fourth in receptions among running backs. And this matchup with Pittsburgh doesn't really scare you. Pittsburgh has allowed a touchdown to an opposing running back in each of the last three games. Who's going to score? Which running back do you think has the better shot at a touchdown? It's Devin Singletary in this game. So, yes, I think he's a high-end flex, low-end RB2 against the Steelers defense that's 24th against the run. Yep, haven't been great against the run. Okay, Gabe Davis, uh, the most talked about fantasy player in the offseason, arguably, hasn't happened the past two weeks. Are you uh, ringing the alarm bell on Gabe Davis or are you continuing to start him? No, I'm, st- I'm starting him. I think he's a viable wide receiver three. He comes in at wide receiver 28 for me as we sit here on Friday morning. Obviously, the ranks will be updated over the weekend as we get more news on Friday practice reports. But, you know, Isaiah McKenzie remains in the concussion protocol. We already know Jamison Crowder has been ruled out. Dawson Knox has been ruled out. And to me, that's the big one because the calling card for Gabe Davis has been touchdown equity. This is a guy who last year was top five in terms of end zone targets among wide receivers despite not playing a lot. And this year, he is playing a lot, right? He's, he's, he, he's played 100% of the snaps. He's run the most routes by any Buffalo wide receiver. Now, so far, that hasn't totally translated into fantasy production, obviously. He was wide receiver 87 last week, despite playing a ton of snaps. 
But my expectation here is, again, with a narrow target tree, no Knox, no Crowder, maybe no McKenzie, I do think Gabe Davis gets a, a, a nice target share against a Steelers secondary, by the way, that you can throw on. Yep. I mean, and Pittsburgh has been bad. They are a bottom 12 pass defense so far this year. Give me Gabe Davis as a wide receiver three this week. Yep. Uh, you know who also hasn't had a great past two weeks is Stefan Diggs, who hasn't really lit things up either. I think Miami were kind of selling you're, out. You're talking about the chief ball officer, Stefan yeah, Diggs. CBO. Friend of the podcast, yeah. Stefan Diggs, absolutely. Yep. So Miami, they were selling out to stop deep balls. It was all over the middle to Devin Singletary. And then the Baltimore game, like Josh Allen went 19 of 36 in tough conditions. You kind of have to throw that out. Now, this game is at home in Buffalo. We'll see what the weather will be like, but they're yep. used to playing in Buffalo. Yep, they are. Now, Lions, Patriots, Blockbuster, Pats, Bailey Zappi's minus three and a half point favorite against the Detroit Lions. The over-under is 45 and a half. And I, I bet that line moves, knowing that Amon Ross St. Brown is back, Shark is back, you know, Reynolds, he'd missed er practice earlier. Yep. My guess is that line moves. Yeah, to me, that line should be Patriots minus two, not minus three and a half. So I would bet on the Lions plus three and a half. Now, every week, it's a question, Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Harris, who are you starting and can you start both of them? Yeah, and I think the answer is yes. Yep. I think you can start both of them. I, again, Bailey Zappi, give the Patriots credit and give that young man credit. Like, he came in in a very tough situation and played well. And honestly, like, they had a real shot to win that game at Green Bay. I think you could argue maybe they should have. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is Zappi, I think, played really well and they're going to be conservative with them. Like, it's still a run-first offense. You think about the Detroit Lions. Only two teams in the NFL have given up more rushing yards per game than the Detroit Lions. You can run on Detroit. They've allowed 120 rushing yards and multiple rushing touchdowns to running backs in three of four games this year. So I think both Ramondre Stevenson, my running back 19, and Damian Harris, my running back 23, are viable starters this week as well. I've Stevenson is a top 20 play and Harris is a high upside flex rest of the season who do you want Stevenson or I still Harris? want Stevenson who's had consecutive games with 16 touches and 85 scrimmage yards I just I think he's the more versatile player I, Harris is a nice running back make no mistake but he's the more versatile player there Harris is certainly leading in terms of touchdowns three to one but more receptions and receiving yards for Stevenson they both have over 200 rushing yards um, Harris has just 10 more rushing attempts than Stevenson's on the year and so feels like slowly but surely the this role is becoming more Stevenson heavy again if you're telling me this guy's getting 16 or more touches in a game for the Patriots I want in on that with Ron J Stevenson yeah especially given the passing game usage I think I think each week you make Damian Harris a slight favorite to get more just rushing attempts than Stevenson, but you make Stevenson He's a heavy like, favorite he, to get passing game work. A than thousand Harris. percent. And Harris is more likely to like if you're you know putting odds on it. He's more likely to fall into the end zone. Who's yeah. you know? But uh, I again. I think both guys are viable this week against the Lions. Okay, quickly, Josh Reynolds. Uh, obviously, this is hugely contingent on Amon Ra St. Brown. And if he DJ doesn't Shark. play, and, and DJ, DJ Shark, Shark, by yep. the way, I, I think uh, like I ranked him going. I ranked him on Thursday as wide receiver 30. Now with St. Brown, if we get news after practice, he looked good. He's good to go for Sunday. You know, no setbacks during practice. Assuming that Shark and St. Brown are active, we thank Josh Reynolds for his service last week. We'll remember it fondly. <laughs> But back to the waiver wire you go, unless unless one of those guys is out. And hey, if Sharks and St. Brown get hurt again, we will revisit you, Josh Reynolds. Did your bold prediction of that win, Josh yes. Reynolds, top twenty wide receiver? He was an easy top twenty wide receiver okay. last week. There you go. Hang Very on, let good. me. Look, I'll look that up. Josh Reynolds um, in week four was wide receiver nine. Wow. I could have said top ten and been right. So Mark, Michael 20. Smith wanted you to get. I could have said, to said top, top nine. ten and you pulled out. Pulled out. Should have yeah, gone all I in. Should have gone all in. I didn't go as. I didn't. It doesn't matter. I didn't go as bold as Michael Smith. That was a great call by Michael Smith, who said, literally, to the, said 330 <laughs> passing yards <laughs> yeah. and 30 rushing yards for Geno Smith. Two passing touchdowns and rushing touchdowns, and literally, like not only he hit those numbers and went above them it's on both. Of, I mean, like. Unbelievable call by Mike. Michael Smith should never make another prediction again. He should abstain. He should just yes. be like that. I'm going out on that one. Walk out. Exactly okay. right. Seahawks with Geno Smith, a five and a half point underdogs in New Orleans. No mm. respect for the rejuvenated Geno Smith, comeback no. player of the year candidate. The total is 46 and a half. And I think the most interesting fantasy player in this game is Rashad Penny, who for the first time this year flashed back to the last six weeks of last season when he was the best running back in the sport. 
Playing against the Detroit Lions makes a lot of running backs look good. Having said that, we've seen sustained success from Rashad Penny, as you mentioned, dating back to last year. Um, this year, the Seahawks offense better than advertised, better than we expected. He's played at least 69% of the snaps in three out of the four games so far this year. He's averaging 5.96 yards per carry. That is the fourth highest among running backs. So Rashad Penny, uh, I currently have him. Uh, Rashad Penny going on the road to New Orleans which has been a bottom 12 run defense so far this year. Yeah, I think Rashad Penny, look, he comes in at running back 33. So I think he's more of a running back three. He's more of a flex play, but I'm more buying him than not, if you will, because normally I'd just be out entirely on the Seahawks run game. Yeah. And, and when my ranks come out, he'll be up a little bit higher as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think he's, he's in that 20 to 30 range. He's a flex play. I think he's probably the highest variance running back in the entire league week oh, to dude. week because he has these two touchdown 151 yard games in him with a surprising amount of consistency and then he also has games where he might just get seven carries and they want to go with Kenneth Walker or something and then he's just completely nothing. Right, but Travis Homer is already on IR yep. and yesterday, uh, last night, again I haven't updated my rankings yet today, I'm going to wait till the Friday practice reports, but uh, Kenneth Walker showed up on the practice uh, mm. the injury report, uh, list as well. So we don't know if he's going to play or not, but certainly if he's less than 100%, you feel like you feel pretty good about the, the massive workload that Rashad Penny should get on the road at New Orleans. I'm in on Rashad Penny this week as a flex. Yep. Speaking of massive workloads, Tyler Lockett's had 30 targets the last three weeks. Dude. Geno Smith has kind of locked onto him. Uh, what are you doing with Tyler Lockett this week? Just an automatic start for the time being? I don't being? think he's an automatic start, but he, again, he's a wide receiver three. I'm at wide receiver 24 here. I think if you're starting a pass catcher, I still feel better about him than DK Metcalf. I know Metcalf had a big game last week, but at least six catches and 75 yards now in three straight games for Tyler Lockett. Like that kind of consistency, we know about Lockett's talent, but getting that kind of consistency from him is really impressive as well. By the way, I also my expectation here is that that uh, Marshawn Lattimore will be on Metcalf because they use they move Le Met, uh, they use Lockett a lot more all over the field. So uh, I prefer Lockett to Metcalf this week. I think he's a viable wide receiver three. Can I take you for a walk, Matthew? Because sure. I want to just pick your brain on something. Will we what hold if, hands? What if Geno Smith was just good is your all wife, along? Is it, it's just like you want to take me on a walk? Is this because your wife is like <laughs> your wife is just like I, you, and now you're looking for other prey? Is this what's going on? But Sophia minus you, 200 you, reference caches again. Yeah, exactly. That's a really a sure bet. Yeah. So Geno Smith. Yeah. Is 39th pick in the draft, comes into the Rex Ryan Jets. That's a bad Jets team. This is post the glory era of Mark Sanchez taking them to AFC title games, 2013. Uh, and it was a bad Jets team. Six and a half win total. They're bad. Yeah. Gino gets benched. And then for eight years, just isn't seen as a starter in the league. Just a perpetual backup. This is his first sustained and he, run. And he tore his ACL at one point, didn't he? Yeah, right. he's been yep. injured. He dealt with all of that. Right now, he is top three in the NFL in PFF grade, DVOA, passer rating and it's not like these have been terrible defenses like you have to play the broncos defense the niners defense which is the best in the league and he's performing like a top three quarterback in the nfl so you, i don't think he's going to be an mvp candidate or anything but i think we kind of have to adjust to think that geno smith might be yeah he might, might be, be the, good he might be the 15th best quarterback in the nfl right it's not he, crazy is no, it no it, it's not look this is a guy that was really productive at west virginia as a, as a college quarterback um, uh, yeah, if I want to say this is off the top of my head. Keep me honest, Blake, where we are. I think he was a second round pick. Yep, second round pick, high second round. High second 39. round. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, it's not like, I mean, there's, there's a little bit of draft capital. Uh, and so it, it has been a minute, as the kids say. But I don't think that's a crazy premise at all. But yeah. maybe, you know what? Maybe Geno Smith is good. Yep. Again, like, you know, they wrote me off. I ain't right back. <laughs> you know, like, I, listen, I. It just as as store as NFL stories go, that would be awesome. Yep. Like that. Like honestly, Russell Wilson, w Russell Wilson wanted out of Seattle. Make no mistake. And so it's it's unfair to Geno Smith to sort of compare him to Russell Wilson because they're different players with different careers. But like there is something to the idea of like you, you, you know like Russell Wilson certainly struggling now and Geno Smith like again. Everyone thought the Seahawks were, were – and through four games, Geno Smith's been the better quarterback than yep. Russell Wilson. That, that's – you know. I think he is a serious chance to win comeback player of the year. To me, it's Saquon and Geno and then the rest. All right, let's get into Chris Olave, the red – Rifle proof, Chris Olave. Distinction. 33 targets the past three weeks. Now, I think he is someone that you're just starting regardless of Dalton or Winston. 
Yeah, I mean, and it's not looking great for Winston. We'll see how Friday, but, you know, Winston missed yesterday, as did Michael Thomas. So we expect a lot of targets here for Chris Olave, who is at 80 yards or touchdown in three straight games. The talent is obvious as well. You certainly love, you know, it's one of those things where you're just like, you know, hey, it, you're playing Seattle. Like, it's like you had me at Seattle. They're home to Seattle. Uh, and there's only been um, three teams in the NFL worse against the pass than the Detroit, I'm um, sorry, than the Seattle Seahawks this year. So Saints at home to Seattle. Yeah, give me some Chris Olave yep. as an easy locked in top 20 play this week. For those watching, we're showing offensive rookie of the year odds powered by BetMGM, where Chris Olave is now the clear favorite at plus 450 in front of Kenny Pickett, Drake London, Romeo Dobbs, and then Damian Pierce. Uh, Garrett Wilson, George Pickens, Brace Hall. I do think that Olave is probably the rightful favorite just because of the targets that he's going to get. But interest, like, I actually think that that market is the betting market that ties most into fantasy than any okay. other market just because it's just purely about production. It's purely about statistical production. It's you not don't about have like to be on a winning team. Oh, you don't? Okay. It's not really. I mean, Saquon won it on a, like a 5-11 and 11 Giants team. I don't think that's a prerequisite. Uh, it's more about just about production. So... Um, just I, think if Kenny, I think if Kenny Pickett is good, yes. then I, I mean, you know, quarterbacks, I just sort of feel like it's a quarterback league. So if, yes. if Kenny Pickett is good and everyone's saying like, oh, good, we figured out our post-Ben solution, yep. then um, I think it would probably be him. But there's no question. He has the talent and the opportunity to put up big numbers the rest yep. of the way. Yep. Okay, let's jump into Titans Commanders. Uh, I'll start with Robert Woods, who got into the end zone, but just hasn't seen the volume that maybe we hoped for. He's had 12 or more fantasy points now in back-to-back -back games. Yeah. Traylon Burke is not going to play in this game without the turf toe. And, again, you had me at Commanders. <laughs> I mean, Washington is a bottom-eight pass defense. They've been absolutely brutal as well. No team has given up more touchdowns to opposing wide receivers this year than my Washington <laughs> Commanders. There we go. Hail the Commanders. Hail victory. They've also given up the third most yards to the position as well. It's a team that plays poorly. Robert Woods maybe has lost a step, but he's um, – uh, you know, he's still a very accurate route runner. I think he gets enough volume here to pay off for you. I think he's borderline wide receiver three and four. Yeah, I think it's a good sign that Derrick Henry has looked better the past two weeks because that entire Titans passing game has always been off of play action where Tannehill is one of the best in the league. Now let's talk about your guy, Terry McLaurin, who is coming off of a tough game where uh, Trayvon Diggs had the game of his life against McLaurin. But have you lost any faith in uh, Terry McScore? No, like and by the way, Curtis Samuel returned to practice today, so that's helpful. We'll see if Jahan Dotson uh, plays. He limit practice limited on a limited basis today. But Samuel is back at practice, and so with him and McLaurin, it's sort of hard to kind of pick your poison. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I have McLaurin as a top 30 play this week. Titans have played better defense recently, but they're still on the season. They're a bottom four pass defense, and I do think – they're going to have to throw, make no mistake, Carson Wentz second in the NFL in pass attempts through four games. It is a passing offense. It is a passing offense. Okay, we're going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to dive into some more Week 5 games, including Bengals, Ravens on Sunday Night Football. Hey on now. NBC, I'm a company man, Matthew Barry. It's about time. Be sure to check out our new Sunday show, Fantasy Football Pregame at 11 a.m. Eastern, live on Peacock. It's a one-stop shop for your NFL fantasy and betting needs. Get your sit, start questions answered using the hashtag FFPregame. That's with me, Matthew, and Michael Smith. Michael Smith riding hot after his incredible Geno like, Smith I like prediction. to introduce you to stuff with me. <laughs> yeah. Then Matthew, Michael, Matthew Barry, yeah, then, then Michael, Michael Smith. Smith. I like, yeah. Okay, interesting that you yeah. gave yourself, um, That's... I like that you gave yourself top billing. All right, now what we're watching for in week five, let's jump into some of the big games, the biggest of all, AFC North showdown mm -hmm. between the Bengals and the Ravens. It's uh, Ravens minus three and a half. Not a lot of respect for uh, Joe Burrow and co. The total on that one is a pretty high 48 as well. Now, I think the thing to look for in this game is just, do you think that the Bengals are just going to gash the Ravens secondary like they did last season? Yeah, I mean, like, I always like home teams in primetime games. I feel like they get up, especially tough loss last week to the Buffalo Bills. So I do think the Ravens sort of get up for this game and, and you know, they kind of they play better defense than you might expect. Sunday night, games on NBC and Peacock, of course, I'm a company man. But having said that, no team has allowed more passing yards per game than the Baltimore Ravens. They've given up 312, right? Um, and 
teams facing the Ravens are averaging over 44 pass attempts per game. You think about the two games that Joe Burrow played against the Ravens last year. 941 yards, seven touchdowns, one interception, massive games. We talked about that in preseason. We're like, one of the reasons why Joe Burrow's overall production last year was inflated because he had these two crazy games against the Ravens. And so, yeah, I mean, I have him as a top six quarterback this week. I think Burrow has a monster game. Give me the over on his passing yards. Give me the over on Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and their passing yards. I think it's going to be a bit of a shootout here. Yeah, I think at some point in the season, the Baltimore secondary is going to get a lot better. But right now, it's not been great. They're still below average defending deep passes. But there's a lot of talent in that secondary. There's Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, uh, Kyle Hamilton. Like this, there's, there's going to be growing pains there. But as those guys come off their injuries and get healthier and get more gelled together, I think that there should be something there. And yeah, look, what Jamar Chase and T. Higgins did last season against the Ravens, Jamar Chase is the one that certainly stands out with 326 receiving yards in two games, destroyed Marlon Humphrey in that first matchup, 53.6 fantasy points for Chase, 56.6 for Higgins, which is absurd. Uh, at the same time, I don't think they're going to put up those type of numbers, but they'll put up numbers. Ravens gave up over 300 passing yards to Mac Jones and Joe Flacco. Yes, that Just, is that is true. Yeah. Okay, let's jump into. Anyway, well, you're starting you're starting all your Bengals. Yeah, you're starting all your Bengals, including Joe Mixon, who Zach Taylor is intent on running 20 times a game, even if it's for two yards per carry. God so, bless. If you just ride with Joe Mixon until Zach Taylor yeah. decides to do something different. All right, let's jump to Cardinals Eagles. Okay. Uh, the line right now is Cardinals plus five at home to Philadelphia. Uh, not a lot of respect for a team that was a one seed in the second half of last season. Now, do we think that this offense can keep up with Philadelphia and which Cardinals are you starting? I mean, you're starting Kyler and um, you're starting Zach Ertz. Right. And uh, you're starting, and you're starting Hollywood Brown. Yep. Those are the three that you're definitely starting. So James Conner, not a definite. I, look, I'm at running back 29. Okay. So I mean, I think he's a, I think he's a touchdown dependent flex play. I'm concerned about him, right? I mean, there's a guy who through four weeks is averaging under 11 fantasy points per game. He's running back 30 on the season. He's had under 60 scrimmage yards in three or four games. The only running back to get more than 40 yards from scrimmage against these Eagles is DeAndre Swift. And over the past three weeks. No team has allowed less rushing yards per game to running backs than the Philadelphia Eagles. They're averaging 46 yards allowed rushing uh, to running backs. This is the Eagles. So, no, I, I don't think James Conner is a must start. Again, you may not have a better option, but Conner made the hate list this week. Like, I just lower expectations, unfortunately, for James Conner. Uh, I, look, you're obviously starting Kyler Murray, and I like Zach Ertz, who made the love list. Again, he leads all tight ends in terms of red zone targets. He's had multiple red zone targets in every game this year, double digit targets in two or three games. We always say start your tight ends against Philadelphia, especially when you think about Slay and Bradbury. They're so good on the perimeter. Uh, I think that's one area of the field you could attack. Revenge game narrative as well. I think Ertz has a nice game here against his former team. Finally, I guess, you know, Marquise Brown. I, I think you have to start him. He's had 39 think, targets the past three weeks. It's yeah, insane. I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think that with Connor, the issue is that like they're a mediocre team right now, Arizona. Like, I'm sorry, Arizona, but the five and a half point uh, dogs at home, uh, that's the, their reality right now. And when you're a middle of the road team and you're not, you don't have like Jonathan Taylor as your running back, then touchdowns are just going to be fluky week to week. And Connor got 16 last year because Cardinals, the Cardinals were competing for the one seed in the second yeah, half yeah, of the yeah. season. I do think quickly on the betting line here, I would be taking. Philadelphia, it's ticking up to minus five and a half. And the reason is, is that the Cardinals, they were six and a half point dogs to the Chiefs in week one. I think the Cardinals are worse than we thought coming into the season. And I think the Eagles are just as good as the Chiefs were coming into the season no right question. now. So I would be taking the Eagles minus six and a half. Let's quickly jump into uh, Dolphins Jets, okay. uh, which is maybe a more interesting game than it looked preseason, certainly with the Teddy Bridgewater element. Are you downgrading the Dolphins wide receivers with Bridgewater? Uh, I am, uh, I mean, slightly, but for our purposes, I don't think it matters. No. Like, I, we were encouraged by the fact that Bridgewater was taking some deep shots. Remember, they've had now 10 days. They're coming up the mini bye, right, because it was the Thursday night game the last week. And so they've had 10 days, Mike McDaniels, is 10 days to realize, okay, I'm playing the Jets with Teddy Bridgewater as my starting quarterback. Tua Tungavailoa not going to play in this game. 
Um, by the way, it's worth noting that, uh, and I tweeted this out uh, uh, from my Twitter account, but I, that, that there, is, uh, there is slight concern on, uh, on um, uh, Marquise, Marquise Brown, right? Um, I'm going to read it real, here real quickly. But basically, Barry Jackson, who covers the team um, uh, for, uh, you know, for, for many, many years, he just said, quote, Tyree Kill had something come up with quad. Quote, we are treating it and we are hopeful he will play. That's Mike McDaniel. So that's a, that's a tweet from Barry Jackson, who's covered the team for like 35 years. You see it there on your screen as well. Um, hopeful? That's not great. That's not great. That's not what you want. Coming like, off a he long, will definitely long play well. coming off 10 days, right? So it's just something to monitor. We'll have more on that Sunday morning on Fantasy Football pregame. Uh, but assuming Tyreek Hill is active, assuming uh, you're, you're still starting Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, the positives of Teddy Bridgewater, and again, we were encouraged by that he took a few deep shots last week, but he's super accurate, especially in, in short. And with 10 days to prepare this game, my expectation here is McDaniels figured out ways to you know do some slants and some crossers where you can get those guys matched up one-on-one -on -one and take advantage of their speed, get lots of yards after the catch, which is what's great about Teddy Bridgewater as well. The, Certainly the, the Jets matchup doesn't scare you. No, and the fear with Bridgewater would be that, you know, check down Teddy. Teddy covers. He doesn't throw it deep. Well, he threw it 61 yards in in the air and completed the pass to Tyreek Hill. So it's not like Tua uh, is Justin Herbert with his arm either. All right, Brees Hall, uh, who has kind of started to take over this backfield, yeah. I think. 45 snaps to Michael Carter's 29 last week. Is Brees Hall definitely the guy you want going forward in that Jets backfield? Feels that way. I ranked him as 21st this week. Season high in touches and, as you mentioned, the snaps. His snap rate, 66%. You see it there on your screen as his snap rate has gotten higher pretty much every week, 45%, like whatever, the Browns game, that was, you know, weird and it was a that big comeback, but 51% in week three, 66% at the Steelers, going against a Dolphins defense as well. I think what's encouraging, look, the Dolphins have a good defense here, but Hall, who was playing last year, uh, last week, played 12 of the 16 snaps they had on third and fourth down. So, you know, the thought process of like, oh, well, Michael Carter's the pass down, passing down back. No, I mean, like, they like Brees Hall in the passing game as well. He's gotten six or more targets in three out of four games this year, which that gives you the confidence that there's a floor even if Miami starts blowing him out. Yep, and I mean, Brees Hall, he was a tier one running back by himself coming into oh, the draft. No His measurables compared to Jonathan Taylor, like if they give him the run, he has all the talent in the world. Now, before we go to break, right now my favorite futures bet on the board is with the New York Jets. Source Gardner is plus 1,400 to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Ooh. To me, he should be almost the favorite with Devin he's Lloyd. Great. I don't understand. Like He's the sixth favorite in the market behind guys like George Karlaftis and Aiden Hutchinson, who plays on the worst defense in the league. To me, Sauce Gardner should be joint favorite for that award with Devin Lloyd, and plus 1,400 I think is fantastic. I Value love that on bet. Bet, bet MGM. MGM. Yeah, I mean, like, by the way, he's also he's in a New York market. Yes, and the that Jets helps have, so much. And that helps, and... And, and this and this shouldn't help, but it does. He's got a great name. Yes. I mean, who Sauce. Does Sauce Gardner. It's like, I mean, come on. Delicious. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic name, and, you know. Um, so he plays in the New York market. He's got a fun name. He's got a fun personality yep. as well, if you've seen any interviews with him. And, and so uh, I like that call out. And by the way, his, he's backing it up on the field. Like, he's, yep. playing, he's, been a he's playing great. He's playing great defense. And the Jets have been better than I think people expected this year. So I like that call Absolutely. quite a bit. All right. Monday's headlines today. That's what's next as the Fantasy Football Happy Hour rolls on. Rolls on. The NFL season is here, and the NBC Sports Predictor app is giving you a shot at winning $100,000 by entering Sunday Night 7's free contest between the Bengals and the Ravens. So if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app, go download it now. Okay, last call. Monday's headlines today. Matthew, what do you got? Go pick up Brian Robinson. Now, we've been talking about this for a while, but I think more and more people are going to be talking about it. Brian Robinson back at practice is an absolutely great story. And we've talked about Antonio Gibson and his usage going down, like Gibson made the hate list this week. I, I don't know that I'm starting Brian Robinson. I'm not starting Brian Robinson. But my prediction for this weekend is, is that Brian Robinson, who's available in a ton of leagues, Brian Robinson is active against the Titans. 
and I bet you they do whatever they can to get yeah. him into the end zone. It's yeah. too good a story. We're all rooting for this kid. That's my headline. I like it. My headline is that the Rams will be on the verge of missing the playoffs after they lose to the Dallas Cowboys. The Rams right now, they have the worst pass blocking grade in the NFL. You know who's pretty good at rushing the passer? Freaking yeah. Micah Parsons yeah, is pretty good. Is. I think that that offense is broken at the moment. They have no vertical element. And I think the Cowboys, who have been sneakily good under Cooper Rush, I think they might go into LA and win that game. Matthew. By a four, that would make Cooper Rush 4-0. Co quarterback controversy with Dak Prescott. Listen, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. For Jay Croucher, I'm Matthew Berry. We'll see you Sunday morning for Fantasy Football pregame, 11 a.m. Eastern on Peacock. Tune in then. Until then, my friends, I am Matthew. He's Jay. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.